Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn with DevOps Engineer. Today's video is about Linux. In DevOps, Linux is the backbone of most infrastructures handling tasks for automation to configuration management. Today, I'll take you through the key Linux commands and concepts that every DevOps engineer should know, whether you are just getting started or need a refresher. This is for you. Don't forget to subscribe for more DevOps tips. So let's start with some core commands that you'll use daily in DevOps. First, ls, list files and directories in your current location. So ls. So this is like a simple command that is going to list directories and files in your current working directory. So for that, I am going to go to the terminal. So this is my terminal. This is my test VM. So I already connected to the test VM. If you are like new to my channel, please check out the video. Link will be let, let's say placed in the description. Or let's say you can check in my playlist as well. There I showed how to create a virtual machine. So yeah, so let's start with the demo. LS. So I'm going to run this command and press enter. So as soon as I do that, I can see some of the directories mentioned here. ls hyphen l a. So here you can see more detailed information. Also, you can see the hidden files. These like dot are like kind of hidden files. And as you can see, this is like the directory. D means directory. Okay, I'll try to create a file and show you that as well. So actions runner is one of the directory. Okay, so now I'm going to clear the screen. Once again, I'll try, try to run the ls command and you can see like multiple directories. So now I will try to go into one of the directory using cd command. Okay, cd is for changing directories from one directory to other directory. cd my agent. Enter. So if I do pwd, that means present working directory. This is also one of the command that is very, very handful. Okay, so now you can see I am in the my agent directory. So if you want to go back to the previous directory, you will do change directory space dot dot. Okay, this will take you back to the previous directory. Previously, we were in the test directory. Okay, test was the working location. So now what we will do, we will create a directory. Make directory demo. Okay ls so now you can see the demo directory previously this was like kind of not visible okay now what we will do is like we will go into that directory cd demo enter and list do we have anything no we do not have anything in this directory so what we will do is like we will try to create a file so there are like multiple ways of you know creating files in linux so one of the uh, method is like using touch command enter that's it you can see the file and also there's like an there are some different editors where you can you know write something into this file or let's say i'll try to create file one this is kind of a new file okay so yeah i am trying to do this vim say it is, it is saying that vim is not installed so yeah i'll come back to that topic as well so yeah for now i think this should be fine like touch file is like one of the ways to you know create a file and then what we will do is like uh, we'll try to copy this file okay i would like to let's say this is my demo file and i will come out of this directory okay and create another directory make directory make directory means like create a directory something it's simple it's not you know much complicated if you want to create a folder in general in c in sorry windows you try to create a folder this is something similar in linux so make directory and the name of the directory you can do it so i created a second directory called demo1 so now what we will do is like we will try to copy the file which is present in demo okay for example let me go to demo1 
do you see something we do not have anything here so now what we will do is like we'll go back i will try to run cp command okay copy demo slash file to i need to provide the destination demo one okay i'll press enter now let's go to the demo one cd demo one you can see we have the file ll it's also you know one of the way to look for the you know the details within the specific directory so yeah we have the file in place now in demo one folder so this is how you know you copy stuff from one folder to other folder okay and the next command is kind of you know cat command cat is like to read some stuff within the file so for example if i write i'll write write cat space file there's nothing in uh, in here so what i will do is like i will try to insert something within this you know file command okay for that what i will do is like i will say echo hello world in file so previously there was nothing in the file now if you see we have hello world so this is how we try to write something and also i'll show you you know the other way uh, using the editor i will try to install that uh, it's coming later in the video so yeah so this is how you try to write something within this file and if you want to read something you use this cat command to read some, something within the file okay cat file okay these are you know the basic simple commands which are which will be let's say very very helpful and useful in your day-to-day -day devops activities with respect to linux so first was kind of linux uh, sorry ls and then followed by cd we have checked then we have checked about cp command followed by uh, i will try to write on the blackboard what all we've uh, checked today cd for changing directory then followed by we have checked about cp copy command copy command then we have checked about cat to read some stuff within the file Okay, these are kind of very basic simple commands. Now let's look at another command. So I'll try to write it here rm. rm means removing. So now I would like to remove the file which I created. So how should I do that? Let me go back to the terminal. cd demo1. I'm going to go into this directory. Clear this list rm with the file name that's it this is deleted now uh, I, I cannot see this file anymore so this is how you know the rm command is useful be very very care careful with this command rm is like very dangerous command in linux you have to be very careful and cautious if you want to delete something okay in the production environments especially not in your local environments so so this is how you know you try to create file and delete file as well so and also there's like let's say i'll try to create once again this file there's another command called move uh, i'll try to write uh, that's echo echo hello world within this file and I'll, i wanted to show you something so this is how you know uh, the, the symbol you see greater than symbol to insert some data within this file okay so cat space file hello world now what i will do is like i will try to rename this file to file one okay i would like to rename this file with file one move command so now you see file one is gone i'm oh, sorry file is gone now we have file one file one as you see the same data is being you know copied to the file one so this is also very handy if you want to let's say um, rename something 
uh, or let's say move your files from one uh, file to other file or, or and also renaming so instead of you know cp command you can use this command for you know uh, moving your files for example move file one to demo let me do that i'll come out of this directory now let me show you what we have in demo okay we have file in demo folder so from here we are going to uh, let's say move use move command move demo one file one to demo folder okay now if we go to the demo folder we should be able to see that file file one so cat file one as you can see so move is useful for renaming the files and also moving the files from one location to other location okay so these are kind of you know major let's say commands you will do like let's say in your day-to-day -day activities um so yeah the next steps are like uh, we talk about you know file permissions so for example i will try to create a file naming touch script dot sh within the same folder so if you look at the permissions i'm going to use list command with hyphen l to you know see the permissions of the script so let's talk about permissions in linux so there are like different permissions let me go back to the blackboard so let's scroll down a bit so in linux we have for each and every file or directory we have permissions that is read write and execute so there are like three different permissions for files or directories within you know uh, linux so read is for number four write is number two execute is number one so these are like defined by numbers four five six seven okay seven if you give seven that means the file will have all read write execute permissions and also similar to that for example there is for a, for a file there will be let's say owner group and others this these are also kind of permissions so for each and every linux file or directory there are like owners owners group and others so we have these permissions as well let me move this a bit here so yeah so this is how we define um, the permissions within linux so owner will have like once again four then group will have two and others will have one so for example these are also represented by the same way how we talk about you know read write execute this will have read write and execute so i'll go back to the terminal and here i'll show you so if you can see the folder here we see script.sh if you see owner owner has read write permissions group has read write permissions and others has only read permission so if let's say if i want to change these permissions i can do that how will i do so this is where the ch mod command comes in picture so ch mod that means change mode followed by the number i can give a number for example i'll give 700 that means i'm going to give the owner full rights that means read write execute currently you don't see that you read c only read write space script dot sh now if i try to list this let me clear this you see it got changed it has let's say read write execute permissions owner has read write execute permissions so whereas if i give let's say for example 777 770 sorry enter 
and now I try to list this. Now you see previously we had only owner had read write execute permissions. Now the group has read write execute. So here we did not have that. Here group has read write ex execute permissions. Whereas if I go back to six, sorry, seven, 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 enter. Now if I check, let me clear this. Check. Now you see all the people. Let's say owners have read write execute, group has read write execute, and others has read write execute permissions. So this is how you know uh, you define the permissions in Linux. And be very careful while defining permissions. Always you know keep restrictive permissions for security purposes. Never give this 777 permission. Always you know make sure you have you know proper process in place if you are planning to give any kind of permissions to anyone any any user it, it can be so be very careful with respect to you know the file permissions here now let's talk about networking so networking is like you know very big uh, ocean i would say so in terms of you know day to day devops activities if you are planning to do that um, so very simple command is like ping that means I'm going to ping google.com. So I get some response as you can see. So we have, let's say, we can use any, uh, let's say, internally if you're trying to search for, uh, if you want to ping any web server or check for, you know, the network connectivity, first you do is like ping, use ping command. So for example, ping. I will try to show another example here. I will open an, uh, another terminal. And now I would like to, you know, ping to this virtual machine from my laptop. So for that, I am going to give ping test VM. So I should get some response. As you can see, I, I get some response. That means I am connected to that virtual machine very correctly. So if we have, let's say any kind of errors, not reachable, then there is some problem. Okay. You need to, you know, debug a bit what's going on. Okay. And if I, this is, you know, one of the, you know, very handful command, which is very useful followed by, we check IP config is like one of the other commands that is like very, very useful to check, you know, all the details related to network. Yeah. So as you can see, we have, let's say two different networks here. For example, I can see the details about this network 192.168. This is like the kind of IP address and this is like the subnet mask. And there's like another network I can see. So there are like two two networks. I'm connected to two different networks. So yeah, this is the command to look into the details about, you know, which network, which IP address a particular virtual machine has. So this is how you try to, you know, use this command. And also now let's talk about netstat so netstat is also one of the very useful command i would say that is to check all the you know open ports on your computer or let's say on your virtual machine or any server so netstat is also very kind of you know handy uh, command uh, to check networking related stuff so netstat followed by hyphen tuln so what is tuln here so hyphen t means that shows TCP connections only and hyphen UO shows UDP connections. L means listing and means disable name resolution. So as you can see, we can see different ports as I said, T, T means like TCP, U means UDP. Okay. And also you can see port 22 is kind of open and it's listening on all IPs. For SSH connections, majorly this is being used port 22 and port 53 is kind of listening on the loopback address for DNS resolution and port 631 here is listening on the common Unix printing system service for local printing. So we have like UDP ports as well. Here they are kind of open for um, multicast DNS and stuff. So yeah. These are kind of, you know, for different use cases. Um, it is like kind of, you know, open on my system. Uh, you can see some other different stuff on your side. So yeah, this is kind of, you know, very, very handy and useful uh, command that you can use. 
if you want to check if uh, any kind of you know op open ports or not so yeah this is how you know you try to check this now let's go to the next step so what is the next step so this is kind of very very let's say useful stuff so if i want to uh, i'll go back to the board so if you want to install something so for example now i would like to install vim package on my machine so let's try to install vim package on our machine so how do we do that so in general this is like very easy um, you just need to type a command saying apt install if you are using ubuntu operating system so if you are using a centos or linux then you have to use yum there so my my machine is ubuntu so i'm going to use apt install vim so before doing that i would like to let's say try to show you whether vim is present on my machine or not vim i try to run this it says vim command vim not found but can be installed with sudo apt install vim okay um so let's do that so it is also suggesting see how to install just copy this clear and try to paste it here sudo apt install the package name whichever package you want to install you just run this command sudo apt install vim in our use case so it will take let's say few seconds to get installed as soon as we install we we should be able to let's say use that package and try to edit our file so i'll i'll show you very quick okay so yeah let's see um so vim i'm going to use vim script.sh see previously it was throwing an error now i can you know get into my script.sh so here i'll try to insert some data so for example let me write a small script here slash bin bash find var log hyphen name followed by star dot log hyphen m time plus seven hyphen execute space rm backslash now i'm going to save this this is like a very simple script to let's say remove all the files older than all the log files in this var log folder older than seven days so yeah I, I try to use this package vim package to write some data to my script okay vim script.sh i used insert you have to use i insert mode to write something as you can see i i used i insert mode and i am try, trying to type something okay so yeah i'm going to save this and exit now so process management is another key skill for uh, listing processes so how do we do that so if i run ps i can see these two processor processes are kind of running okay and there are another ways like let's say for example i would like to use top command so top command gives you like a lot of information as you can see so here it gives you percentage like cpu percentage and memory swap size how much is like free how much buff cache how much available memory like how many you know tasks are running in total how many are like kind of sleeping so all this information and also if you see here you see the details about you know the process id and the process and the command what things are like kind of you know running they're like you can see a lot of information about you know uh, what's going on within your system so this is like one of the ways that you can check for information using this top simple just uh, let me clear the screen once again i'll try to show you top if you just type top you you can see a lot of information and you know try to debug your system okay and the next step is like uh, let's check what exactly is running in on our system so for example i try to install nginx okay i would like to check the status of nginx okay as you can see this is kind of nginx service act actively running so i try to install like some time ago so i can see this kind of you know actively running so if, if you can see there's like a process id okay let's try to kill this process id okay for that i'm going to use kill space 
ID. Operation not permitted. That means I need sudo permissions. Okay. Now let's say if we check sudo systemctl. Let me let me clear the screen. And if you check uh, the service, it's dead. That means we were able to kill the process. So yeah, this is how you know you try to kill a running service. So let's start it once again. Systemctl start nginx service. Now let's check the status. Active and running. So as you can see, this is how you know we try to uh, start the service, kill the service. If there is any kind of you know issues, if you want to kill something, say kill some process, you just use kill command followed by the process ID with the pseudo permissions. Okay. That's a wrap, I would say. These Linux basics are just the start, but they are essential for a solid foundation in DevOps. Mastering these will make handling servers, automating tasks, and troubleshooting much easier. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more DevOps content. See you in the next.